Hi there, what about you? Welcome to Rewind with Julian, where along with a few famous faces, I'll be remembering what life was like when we were hardly out of nappies. Whee! Nowadays, keeping the family entertained is part and parcel of family life. But it wasn't quite like that in my day. Families come in all shapes and sizes, but for some of our celebrities, it would seem the bigger the better. I was the youngest of seven children, so small family, not far away. <laughs> I do remember a family near us had eight children, and when I was growing up, I remember thinking, oh, that's a lot. I, for one, does not approve of the large families. I think two to four children are quite sufficient. Uh, I have only two myself and I wouldn't like to have any more, but I think nine or ten or eleven even, it's just everybody's own business. I grew up in a family with nine kids, uh, five sisters and three brothers and myself, my mum and dad and our dog Caesar and our cat Fisby. And it was, I, I suppose, just blissful and sort of nightmarish all at the same time. One of six boys, obviously it was a very noisy household, we all love to talk, everyone's got a very wicked sense of humour, a very dark sense of humour, so it was a kind of place that was full of laughter, our home, but you had to be quick to get the, the joke in because the competition was fierce. My eldest sister, when she heard that my mum was expecting, was, was thrilled at 11, and um, I understand that when uh, I, I was born, um, my mum said that she cried because obviously she had two brothers uh, who absolutely tortured her and then she, she would have an ally in me as a, as a baby sister. My dad, he had 16 in his family and my mum, she had 14. But then obviously, you know, as modern technology went on, there's obviously satellite TV and, you know, it's, there's, a, there's the internet as well. So there's obviously more to do then of, as years went by brother and I, there's about 17 months between us and then my wee sister came along five and a half years later and I always say apologies but she really was a pain. You know when you're growing up and I was what maybe 10, she deserved it. Well I'm telling mummy Pamela Ballantyne but she's not the first older sibling to entertain themselves picking on the younger ones. Apart from that, how else did we amuse ourselves? back in the day. My mum and dad never seen me. I was out and about all the time. We were either in the fields playing football or cricket or whatever it happened to be. It was never off a BMX and spent hours and hours trying to perfect my bunny hops and wheelies and stunts. It was kind of once the back door was opened, you went out, played the usual, built whatever, dens and huts and played chases. 20 years ago, um, it was much better. You know, kids were out on the street playing games. You know, you're running about knocking each other's doors, people playing the street, street parties. You know, the community was like a lot closer together. On the mountain stands a lady, who she is I do not know. All she wants is gold and silver, all she wants is a nice young man. There was a, a lovely girl who lived a, across the way uh, from me and uh, her daddy uh, worked in the rope works uh, in Belfast and he got us this fabulous skipping rope. It was the envy of Larn. Queenio, Queenio, who's got the polio? You were out for the whole day and again because it was the playing phase and it was the BMX track you had plenty to entertain yourself. The only time you really had to be home was for lunch. We used to come home just whenever our stomachs were grumbled and grab the ham, jam sandwich or ham sandwich, mm -hmm. beat it into you and then away, like rockets again, straight back out again, before you were asked to do something. The great outdoors was fertile ground for the imagination, where you could be anything or anyone. Just ask this lot. Our bicycles were never bicycles. We got a, a cord and tied a bit of cord to the, the, the right uh, handle and a bit of cord to the left handle. Then they became horses. So we steered them with, with, with the ropes and we were, we were raw hide and all sorts of cowboys and John Wayne. Uh, and so our bikes then became horses. My sister and I used to go out to the back garden. We had a swing set in the back garden and a, like a netball net and everything. 
but we loved kicking a ball about and I was always David Beckham and she was always Peter Schmeichel, big Man United fans. I remember going round to the local bicycle shop to see can I get a bicycle wheel. Now, with no tube or no tire, just the, 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 the tin rim with the spokes and getting like a drumstick, something shaped like a drumstick and going down the New Year Road holding on to this thing and going like blazes thinking it was I was John Surtees or some of these people round corners and I thought I was some kid in that. I played outdoors all the time and because neither of my sisters were interested in sport to any great extent I used to play football outside on my own but I wasn't playing it on my own. I invented a family they were called the Coles and I don't know why I chose that surname but I remember actually telling a friend of mine that the Coles lived up the laneway from us. And the Coles never existed, but they existed in my life when I was about seven or eight years of age. And I got to know the Coles very well. And you know, there was a Jim Cole, and Tommy Cole and Bill Cole. <laughs> Kids today, they don't know they're born. Isn't that right, Rose? Nowadays, young children, when they come round to our house, tend to bring their gadgets and their electronic toys with them. Uh, even if those had been invented when I was a kid, I think they would not have been tolerated. We were encouraged to go and play in the back garden. I remember doing the hand games, so it was like, a sailor went to see, 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 to see what he could see, 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 and all that he could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue, see, see, see. I still do that with my nephews and nieces now, so I'm trying to carry it on. I had the metal skates that kind of, they were adjustable and then they had like a little red leather strap and you sort of tighten them onto your shoes. But you couldn't really properly skate, you just kind of walked like that. But then I progressed further and I got roller boots, which were navy, like a velour velvet, and they had a, a rainbow on them. And so I think I had red wheels and then I was up and down. Did they have a, like a big thing at the front to stop? The stopper, yes, yeah. yes. So when you went backwards, that's how you stopped. I remember having the metal skates as well and they were, um, they only worked on a really smooth surface and once you got up a wee bit of speed then that would have been the exact moment that one foot you'd have lifted up and as you did your foot come out and then you basically you foot planted and then you went down and you mm -hmm. went down hard. The biggest thing that I ever got or loved that I got one year was a balloon and I played with it the whole of Christmas day and what, we used to have an old modern Mr range and the balloon of course hit the range and the balloon burst and that was my Christmas spoil. Of oh, dear love Philomena and her wee balloon. While play was simpler, so too were birthday celebrations. It used to be like cast of thousands because uh, like mummy would have said uh, well now naturally we invited your friends from you know round about but I just uh, I invited the whole class I mean everybody uh, you know just arrived but it was all right because we had a, a quite a big back garden and as I say the sun always shone in those days. <laughs> Growing up in your birthday party at home it would have been you know a few sandwiches a few a few cocktail sausages uh, some crisps and top hats all homemade of course nothing bought in and you'd have played past the parcel, musical bumps, musical statues, and you'd have been away home with a, you know, a party bag, which would have consisted of a bit of cake in a bag, a pencil and a rubber. There would be always one naughty child and a food fight breaking out in my parents' dining room. And mum and dad were absolutely furious. Mum always said she remembers finding mashed potato. Why were we having mashed potato at a birthday party? I don't know, inside the piano. What were those games we used to play? Things like um, hide the thimble and all that. It sounds desperately boring now, but it was great fun at the time. Can I ask them a question? Ask them all the questions you want to. Girls and boys, you all enjoying yourselves? Yeah! Do you know the way nowadays kids would have clowns or superheroes booked for their parties? When I was growing up, it was just my dad just rotated five or six jokes every year. Jokes like you know, he would say to a cousin, you know, I can put your name in the, a song. And they're like, no, I don't believe you. Do you know, my name's Aloysius. And my dad was all, that's fine. I can, I can use that in a song. I can use any name in a song. And he'd think for a few seconds, and then he'd go, happy birthday to you. Now, we've all been there with our parents covering us to the onion. 
But have they ever slipped up? I'm talking parenting fails. Well, when I was very, very young, we were brought on a family holiday to Bray, and down there, there was a music concert. Of course, Bray is along the waterside, and of course, I went missing. They thought it could be in the water, where could he could be taken, where could he be? And they heard the announcement from the stage where Joe Dolan was performing. We have a child on the stage. I was on the stage with Joe Dolan, the tender age of five or six, having the time of my life. I remember one time we, we left. <laughs> They didn't leave me, they left my sister behind at a petrol station. We were about 10 minutes gone and um, Daddy realised, uh, just went white in the face, like realised that uh, my sister Claude wasn't in the car. <laughs> so we went back to the, the petrol station and there she was and she was just standing there. And and Daddy said, uh, you know, got her back in anyway, you know, ran over, got her back in. And he said, were you not scared, Claude? And she was like, no, I knew you'd come back to me. <laughs> I've lost them all, every, all four of them, at various times. Got into cars and driven away without them in the car. <laughs> and they left uh, one single crock on the roof of a car in a lay in France when I was going, we're going to miss the boat, we're going to miss the boat, one of those ones. And I still brought up on a semi-regular basis about, do you remember those pink crocs I had? I really liked them and you lost one of them because you were in a bad temper. I tell you what many of us wish was abandoned by the roadside, the hand-me-downs we were forced to wear. My brother John had been given this camel haired double-breasted little, he looked like a little royal prince type of coat, you know, for his confirmation. So I was put into it and I had a little bowl haircut, probably not unlike this, to be fair. The me round cheeks and mommy took me to get shoes and I kept saying to the shop assistant, I like these, and she would say, Right, well, but what about these? And she'd take me over there and show me something big clumpy thing. And I said, no, no, but I like these. And back and forth. And eventually I was holding this pair of cutie shoes. And she went, but those are girl shoes. And I went, but I am a girl. First time I got a full brand new outfit, I probably was about 17 because everything was handed, not even from relatives, just people that knew you. <laughs> you stop in the street and go to my mum, Helen. <laughs> what size is Stephen now? Because I have a bag of clothes, get them in, I'm going to do it. That's what you'd have worn. They were brand new to you, so you'd have like... Yeah. Hey! Walk around. I remember at one stage I had a kind of aqua green velour long sleeve top. Velour was very popular in it was days. It was massive and I felt like quite the, quite the man Spo sporting it. <laughs> More from me in part two as we go back to the classroom. See you shortly. Welcome back. Reading, writing, arithmetic, playground fun. School days are the best days of your life, aren't they? Yeah. Well, this lot certainly have something to say about that. We don't need no Going to school, five years of age, but mummy bringing me down, me screaming the place down. Screaming. And I think my mum hung about for about 10 minutes, and then that was it. Every day was great. I loved school. I remember whenever education really hit me. I was in primary three, and we had a teacher called Miss Loughran in St. Anne's Primary School in Dunmurray. And that's when I realised that if you make an effort to learn, you will learn. So I got that in primary three. And so the rest of my school years, and indeed my life beyond that, has been one constant learning curve. All in all, it's just a in the I look back on my school days very, very positively. I'm still friendly with probably about 12 of the girls that I was in P1 with and we still meet and have lunches and crack together. You know the expression that school days are the best days of your life? That's the greatest load of rubbish. I hated school. I never had one good day in school. I thought it was awful. And the wolf said, then I'll cough, then I'll cough, and I'll I always loved getting the the pencil cases, the school bags, the the uniform, the the new stuff. I loved getting new stuff in the summer leading up to going to school. For me, it was always the stationery. 
I mean, I still have a great love of stationery. Uh, I love a good highlighter. Uh, something I've passed on to my children. I was a quite a diligent, able pupil, but I never shut up. I would talk incessantly. And I went to school in the early 70s, into the 80s, and that was the year of corporal punishment. And I can tell you, it didn't work because I would get strapped every week for talking in class. Have I shut up? No. What do I do today? I talk for a living. Corporal punishment didn't work. Here, here, Mark. I was always a good boy at school, never gave my teachers any cause for concern. Unlike Sarah Clark, and you'd think butter wouldn't melt. And we had to wear this awful green uniform, bottle green uniform, and you know, with a really long skirt. It wasn't like down to your knees, but it was a skirt just below your knee. It had to be a couple of inches below your knee. And one of the ways that the teachers would have would have checked that your skirt was the requisite length would be, you know, to make you kneel down on the floor and uh, see that the that the hem actually brushed the floor. And you know, woe betide those girls who, who it didn't. You know, it was straight to the headmistress, but. We all had a wee trick, which I'm sure a lot of a lot of <laughs> women would would appreciate, where you used to roll the skirt up a little bit, and then you could roll it back down. So that was how you got around it. Way back in 1900, and frozen to death when I was at school, I was told by my classmates never have the rice pudding because there's frogs in it. Tell me this, love, are you still serving up those lumpy old mashed potatoes? Don't be so rude. Not at all. School dinners, to this day, haunt you. The smell of cooked cabbage that has been cooked within an inch of its life. Didn't matter what you were eating, it just all smelled the same. You know, and then that queuing up, you know, it <laughs> queuing up like you were starving, like you were, but... <laughs> I got school dinners in primary school, and I loved them. And I'd have been in there front of the row to get the extra spoonful. Of course, giving the glad eye to the dinner ladies to ensure that I'd get the extra spoonful of crumble. And when you got to be a server, it was brilliant because you could cut that cake into um, slightly different sizes. Yes, I'll have that big, but there. Basically, everything came with custard. That was probably the easy, but our custard was really, really great. And it was very boring the day. If you went in and you had soup as a starter and no dessert, you were just like, what? What's going on here? That's rubbish. What do you like that? Mm, I like chips. 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 And fish. Is it better than going home for lunch? Mm -hmm. My abiding memory of, of, of school dinners was the, the tin uh, beakers. You know, there was water, a big jug of water, but then the, these like gold tin beakers and you drank out of it, and while it tasted, yeah, you knew there was water. There was there was a, an iron taste with it as well that it, that it, that I didn't really like. Do you remember you burned the burgers in the, in the house? Yeah. We're scheming school, and uh, I don't know, it was called scheming. We call it Mitchin in Dublin. Scheming. Um, Paddy had a great idea of cooking burgers in the oven. We didn't know how to cook burgers, Co so Paddy. Cooking burgers in an oven in a house I wasn't supposed to be in. Yeah. And lo and behold. Four fire brigades later. Oven went on fire. And we're all scheming school. And all these fire engines start turning up at the house. And he's trying to say, please don't tell ma'am. Please don't tell ma'am. Covered in black smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Struggling with smoke inhalation. Do you think is there any way you couldn't tell my mother? <laughs> I'm supposed to be in double science right now. No burnt burgers here today, where I'm dining with Eli and Blythe from P2 and Fia and Olivia from P1. It's what's on the menu today? Chicken curry. Chicken curry. Do you like curry all right? Yeah. But then there's rice and also added with some bread. And what did you have for pudding? Chocolate cake. And chocolate cake. The chocolate cake. Do you like the chocolate cake? So I'm dying to know, what's your favourite meal at school? Um, I like the burger. The burger. Do you like the burger? No, I, I'd be a bit the same. I'm not fussy about burgers. Do you like the burgers? Thumbs up for that. All right. Ah, oh, aren't the lovely wee childer.
Now we're rapidly approaching the finish line in tonight's program. So what better time than to turn our attention to one of the events that, win or lose, children look forward to most in the school year, Sports Day. I would have skipping ropes run up and down the back garden and the running and the bing bag and the egg and spoon. I would practice it all for weeks on end leading up to Sports Day. And yes, I was so competitive, I had to win. I have no balance, I can't ride a bike, I can't walk a straight line. What chance have I got in an egg and spoon race? So I had to learn to be a loser very, very quickly. But I became very good at losing, so if nothing else, I'm consistent. I was awful at everything and I was so bad that one year they even they gave me a medal for being fourth in the hopping race. And I brought it home and it wasn't even made of metal, it was like this plastic disc brown disc and I put it on my mum laughed her head off at me and she still keeps me going about coming forth in the hopping race. That sounds like a pity medal. It was a pity medal, but you know what? I'm proud of it. <laughs> Did come forth. A pity plastic medal for fourth in the hopping race and you're proud. Look, take your victories where you can. <laughs> Well, there's the bell. So now, from all my new best friends here, thank you very much for watching. Say goodbye, kids. Oh my goodness, the tarts! <laughs>